gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and the aircraft we're going to be looking at is the btd-1 douglas destroyer and um I'll, i'm going to give you guys my honest impression impression of this aircraft but a little bit of a backstory for this aircraft is definitely needed so the douglas btd destroyer is an american dive slash torpedo bomber and on June 1941, the United States Navy placed an order with the Douglas Aircraft Company for two prototypes for this vehicle. And only 30 of the BTD-1s were ever made. But sadly, the, um, well, the destroyer came out just on the tail end of the uh, World War II and so this aircraft never really saw action in World War II. Um, so with a little bit of a backstory done, I know that was extremely brief, but again, that's the only information that I could really find. So how is the BTD-1, the destroyer, like in War Thunder? Well, it's a premium aircraft. It sits at 4.0. Um, it has twin uh, 20 millimeter AN M2 cannons, which are 20 mils. So they shoot slow, those sluggish rounds. Um, for the modifications, you have everything unlocked. Um, if you're going to be using this in tank realistic or in air realistic, I do recommend going with the ground target belt because with this aircraft, you most likely be going for the enemy bases or for enemy ground targets, so you do have a bit of a bomb load, but we'll get into that here in a bit. So your default rounds are the high explosive fragmentation incinerary shells with the armor piercing incinerary tracer shells coming up from behind. Then you have universal, which is the high explosive fragmentation with the armor piercing uh, incinerary tracers. Not much of a difference, just you can just look at the little picture pixogram that they have here and they can pretty much show you where the, uh, the rounds are loaded in the clip. Then you have your ground targets, which is the armor piercing incinerary tracers with the high explosive incinerary shell with the practice shells in behind. And then you have your air targets and then you have the stealth. Um, if you're strictly going for, you know, air targets, then you have to go with the air target belt but most likely go with the ground or universal is you guys' best bet for the ground and pound capability sorry i accidentally hit my mic you can go with six 250 pound bombs with a max armor penetration high explosive action of 92 meters or you can go with the two 250s or two 500 pound bombs for you know a more of a hit and run attack uh, you can carry two 1,000 pound bombs, which is more ideal if you're going, you know, in tank realistic and you want to drop, you know, one 1,000 pound bombs on, you know, two different targets. But if you really want to make your presence known and get your, you know, freedom across, you can carry one 2,000 pound bomb, which if you're going and playing um, AO realistic, this bomb can take out one single base. Uh, but in order to drop that bomb, well, you have to, you know, dive because this plane has no bombing reticle. And once you lose your altitude in this plane, you're pretty much a sitting duck and you lose all advantage. So there's pretty much a, a hit and run and you have to be stuck with either going against, you know, um, static defenses or trying to go after AA vehicles. Um, if you manage to play, you know, naval battles, you can queue this up in your 4.0 lineup because it does carry two Mark 13-44 torpedoes with a max payload of 2,216 pounds each. So I have tried these and they are absolutely lethal. They are devastating. I didn't play in naval battles. I managed to get myself onto a map where I you know, manage to use them. And, but, uh, be advised, uh, I was not aware of this, but you can actually drown your torpedoes. I know it's extremely weird. I don't know if it was just due to the approach that was coming, but I managed to drown one of my torpedoes. 
I know, weird. But anyways, so you do have a plethora of, you know, bombing capabilities that makes this plane quite lethal and tank realistic and air realistic. Um, it's a pretty big plane. Um, as I said, once you, you know, start diving, you do have air brakes, so that is extremely nice um, for descending at a rapid speed and, you know, maintaining that, uh, well, that, that speed. Um, it is very sluggish when it comes to handling, so trying to get into those prolonged dogfights, I don't recommend dogfighting in this plane unless you're an extremely skilled pilot. Uh, you definitely can because, well, any plane can really be a fighter. And any plane can really dogfight if you know how to use it properly. Um, I do recommend, if you're wanting to play in a realistic, queue up with your friends and have them either in fighters or in interceptors. So when you do spawn, you have some little bit of a backup. Uh, max speed with the one 2,000 pound bomb is 553 minus 4.3 kilometers. And it can, uh, at height, well, that's at 16,000 feet. Maximum altitude is 23,000 feet. Turn rate, it is at 27 degrees a second, plus the 3.7. Let's just get rid of that. And the rate of climb is one, uh, sorry, 9.1 meters a second, minus 2.4 meters a second because of the payload that we have. Takeoff run is about 1,007 feet. Armor, well, it's pretty standard. You got, what, a 40 millimeter bulletproof glass here, 9.5, 9.5, you know, not the most well-armored aircraft, but, you know, I've seen worse. Um, so yeah, that's really all she does here in the panel. Let's see the gameplay. So here we are in our first clip of the evening. I do have two other ones coming up shortly afterwards. Um, so with the BTD-1, uh, especially in this game that we're playing right now, I am carrying the two 1,000 pound bombs. Yep, there we go. And uh, just like if you were playing any other bomber, because you know, the BTD-1 does indeed get the uh, bomber bomb, so that is already nice is you want to tell your ally bombers where you're going and so then you know they don't you know go after the same target as you um with the btd-1 it does have air brakes like i mentioned in the um Hano review so descending at a rapid speed is actually doable in this plane because you know you can always activate your um your air brakes so I'm going to tell you guys what my mindset is when I was playing this game. Um, I want to try to get within the, uh, the cover of the clouds. And what I want to strike is I want to be underneath the clouds when I'm about to you know, dive bomb. So you guys can see that I am um, just gliding ever so gracefully into the clouds. I activate my, uh, my air brakes and the air brakes on this plane actually are really, really damn good. Um, they're kind of, you know, funny looking, but, you know, if it's, uh, if it's not stupid and works, then it, you know, it isn't stupid. So, now I am well underneath the clouds, I am now just trying to get myself in. I am just trying to look out for any, um, enemy interceptors or fighters that might have spotted me, because, you know, in War Thunder, you can magically, um, spot planes through clouds. So that is what I'm trying to do. And um, the WEP in this plane is actually really good. It's really decent. It does overheat quite a bit. Um, so when you are, well, trying to fly at low altitudes, it does get a little bit more um, performance out of the engine than what you normally would get if you're flying at those high altitudes. So that is always, always a bonus, but you're not, you're not really going to be outrunning well, anything in this plane, besides if it's like a biplane. Um, it is quite big, and it is really, ma like, well, it's not really massive, it is quite big for a single engine uh, monoplane. 
Um, you guys can see here we're making our attack run. I had a little bit of a uh, fartsy dotsy moment here and I just now released my bombs. And we're about to look back. We got a base damage and yep, one of the other bombs actually missed. I do believe that missed or, you know, they actually both hit. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, that is what two 1,000 pound bombs can do. They can only take, you know, that much off of an enemy base. So again, I really strongly recommend if you guys want to be playing air realistic, take that single 2,000 pound bomb. Especially if you guys are wanting to go after the uh, enemy air base. So we take out two quick triple A emplacements there, and then we're now taking our focus onto the enemy, well, mobile AA, and we got shot up a bit, but we got two targets down, three targets down, four targets down. Can we get the fifth? I think we did, but we go down anyways. So here's the second clip. Uh, we are going to be carrying that one 2,000 pound bomb, just so I can, you know, showcase to you guys and again we spawn up well, well we spawn up with the bombers and I tell my teammate hey I'm gonna be going for this for this base mm. I do apologize so uh, when you guys are down in low altitudes with the BTD-1 um, you guys do lose the you know the whole altitude advantage over your enemy, but you do have that whip. So trying to get away from the enemy is a little bit more valuable. But again, you're not you're not really going to be outrunning much, and the handling of this plane does become a lot smoother at lower altitudes. Is what I can well, which I can you know figure out with this aircraft, um, but don't really expect this plane to be really dancing with you know the me6 uh no not the me2 uh the a6 m2 the zeros this plane is not a dogfighter but again any plane can really be a dogfighter if you know how to uh really pilot the aircraft so as you guys can see i um i really descended there and I'm using the air brakes to my advantage, so then I don't rip the plane in half when I'm trying to, you know, descend. So that is always really, really good. Um, as the intro really indicated, this is a premium. If you guys really want to, you know, grind your aircrafts and just get a, a ton of silver and a ton of XP, I do recommend getting the BTD-1. Um, especially if you guys are wanting to play the naval battles because you know with the torpedoes that you can carry in this plane is really 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 handy to have um, I was doing some digging around and there was a bit of a buff to the torpedoes when the April Fools event was going on with the giant slug and that you were actually able to use torpedoes and um, tank realistic battles and I think that's where a lot of the um, purchases of this plane came out is because you can carry those two torpedoes and tank realistic and just absolutely obliterate anything you see so as you guys can see here this is a bit of a botched run on a enemy um, base but we managed to drop our torpedo any and uh, not torpedo all bomb anyways and yep, there we go. That is what one 2,000 pound uh, bomb can accomplish. So rather than having the two 1,000s, I highly recommend using the uh, the single 2,000 pound bomb if you guys are going after enemy bases. But uh, with playing this aircraft in a realistic, I do recommend, as I said in the beginning, team up with an interceptor or with a fighter. And so when you do, Sorry. When you do descend, you, at least you're at the uh, the same altitude as your fighter or your interceptor. And with an interceptor, they get an air spot anyways, and they'll be able to dive with you, keeping up with you as well. Um, as you guys can see here, well, after you guys have dropped your bombs, you can you can you could either go back to base or you can try to you know engage with enemy um, static ground defenses 
or you can try to go up against, you know, other uh, attack aircraft that might be on the enemy team, or you could go after, like, you know, dive bombers off the enemy team as well. Uh, we managed to take out a AA defense, and we see that there is a BF-110 going, uh, trying to chase down one of our friendly aircraft. So we try to get on his tail. I had a little bit of a misplay though, because I was I was playing AO arcade, so I was trying to wait for the uh, indicator. Uh, we are using ground bouts, but we do have a critical hits, and he does take out our engine, but we managed to take him down. And yeah, not the most cleanest of uh, interceptions that you could have. Our right gun has jammed, so we're trying to file our left 20 mil. And this is actually when I noticed, huh, my engine is out. So I am now trying to uh, gracefully land. I tried to deploy my landing gear. I noticed it was too late, so I tried to raise it. And we don't get the kill on the enemy plane, which sucks, but you know, he tried to shoot us while we were on the ground, which is a big no-no. Either way, eh, you know what? Uh, one base killed, one AA down, and an enemy plane down is actually a pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good game. So the last clip we have for you is, of course, the game that I had where I said I managed to drown a torpedo and I managed to get a torpedo kill. So. If you guys liked this style of review while well, I'm doing a voiceover rather than, you know, doing the live recordings that I do, please comment down below. I'm always eager to hear you guys' comments. And um, the Elite Few is also doing community um, custom games every Thursday. And so if you guys are watching this, hello, I am in the future and the uh, community custom games went well and if you guys want to be a part of that um, there will be a link to the description below of our discord sofa and also there is a link in my uh, my about page as well and yeah and also if you guys want me to actually record the the whole custom games that we actually are having please again comment down below and yeah you guys have been absolutely fantastic. I'll catch you guys next time.